Hello and welcome to Mile High Homeschool. My name is Megan. If you're new here, I like to share thoughts and tips and just some encouragement on homeschooling and hopefully just kind of brighten your day and give you some encouragement here along the way. So today I actually wanted to share with you all how I prep and plan for my six week terms. A lot of people do terms in different amounts. Some people do 12 weeks, 10 weeks, eight, I do six. It just kind of depends on what works for you in your homeschool. But one thing that I have found is that if I can prepare as much as possible ahead of time, then it's much more likely that school will actually happen and that will happen with a good attitude. <laughs> no one will be frustrated or at least just less frustrated. So I find that any little thing I can do to help me just feel like I've got a bit of a leg up on the day is really worthwhile for me. I know that a lot of moms like to reverse plan and they kind of fill in what they did for the day after the day is done. I am not that kind of a planner. I can't do that. I don't know if it's just a self-discipline problem or what, but I cannot have that much freedom when it comes to school. I like to have a much more rigid structure for myself, and which then allows me to have more freedom and fluidity with how I teach my kids. I realize that that might not necessarily make sense that having a really strict framework then allows for freedom and flexibility. But for me, what works best is that if I have my year planned out and I start with just a pretty loose framework and then fill in the terms kind of as I go and as I have time to, um, I only plan half the year at a time. So I start with planning six weeks and kind of see if that flow and that pace of what we're doing is, seems to be working or not. If it's too strict and there's too much that I'm doing, then I lighten it up. If I feel like there's not enough, I might add some more into it. Then I plan the next two terms in the fall semester together um, and plan those two six week terms and then reevaluate at Christmas time, decide if it's still too much, if I need to lighten up, that kind of thing. And then I plan the last three terms of the spring semester. I find that that kind of one term, two term, three term planning method works really well for me simply because then I'm able to have a good idea of the pace that we're making through the school year and whether or not we're going to finish what I had set out to finish and accomplish at the beginning of the year, whether we're going to need to revisit some topics, whether something isn't taking and maybe we need to find a different strategy for it, that kind of thing. Um, and so that way I never feel like I've invested too heavily into planning one area and then suddenly it's backfiring. I feel like usually by about the mid middle of the year, we're in a good pace, we are in a good flow, we know what we need and what works well for us. And so then from that point on, it's not a big deal to plan three weeks for the spring, or three terms I mean for the spring semester. Whereas at the beginning of the year, trying to plan six terms out could be a little overly ambitious for me. So that's kind of how I plan out my terms and why I plan it in that schedule. But then once I have that framework and I know, okay, we're going to accomplish these things within this amount of time, I like it because then if we have a sick day or if we have a day that, hey, the weather's beautiful and we want to do a field trip or there's a family thing that comes up, we have the flexibility to do that. And then I can see whether or not we need to make up the school that we missed that day, whether the school that day wasn't really 100% necessary and I could just like push it to one side or the other because it was more like enrichment things or uh, maybe more filler things, not necessarily like the solid structure, um, if that makes sense. And so then it's easier for me to have those flexible days because I know where we're gonna be at the end of six weeks. Whereas I feel like if I'm reverse planning, I always felt like, well, I don't know when I'm gonna make it up and I'll do it sometime and I don't know. And it just, I always felt behind. Whereas when I have the more rigid structure, I never feel like I'm behind because I know where I'm gonna be at X, Y, Z point. So that's why I plan this way. You don't have to do what works for you. Like I said, everybody's got their own approach and Homeschooling doesn't have to be one size fits all. It can be very customizable. So once I have my weeks planned out, so I already have my terms, my six, my three six week terms planned out for the spring semester. Oh, it's a tongue twister. Um, I've already got those planned out. Once I get my terms planned, what I do is I just get some plain file folders like this and then some hanging file folders for my file cabinet. And I put my hanging file folders in, I've got three of them. And then I have 18 of these, so one folder for each week. And I label them at the top just with what, like 5.1 for like term five, week one. And I do that on all the folders. So right now, my file cabinet right now, I have 4.1 to 4.6 in one 
hanging folder. The next hanging folder has 5.1 to 5.6. Last hanging folder, 6.1 to 6.6. .6. So it makes life really easy. They're ready to go, that kind of thing. And then when I plan, I take all the folders that I need and I get all the workbooks that I need for the subjects that we're gonna do that semester. And so for us, the ones that we really have worksheets in are just uh, math and English and then history. We might occasionally have something for science, it's pretty rare, but history has some map work and some coloring pages, some activities in it. Uh, English has penmanship and spelling and that kind of stuff, like some games on sheets and stuff like that. And then math obviously has like sheets of paper with math problems on them. So I get all of those books together, make whatever copies I need to, that kind of thing, because once again, I already know everything that I'm covering within that six week term, or uh, like when I did it over Christmas break within those 18 weeks, I already know everything I'm covering. So I make all the copies I need, I get everything torn out that I need to, and then I just go through with my uh, big homeschool planner, like I showed you guys the other day, um, and I go through each term and I, or each week for that term and I say, okay, in arithmetic, we're doing pages 30 this week we're, or this day we're combining 29 and 31 and this day we're doing page 32. And so then in section 5.1 or in that file 5.1, I grab those pages and just put them in that file folder. Then move on. What's in 5.2? Okay. What math pages are we doing? And I just do it one subject at a time. Because I find if I try to do one whole week at a time, it gets very distracting. So it's just easier to have all the folders laid out and then lay down all the math pages. Okay, now go back and do all the English. Okay, now go do all the history and do it that way. Um, just because I feel a little more organized and like I'm not forgetting to put something in. Um, so for history this week, we're doing a map work page, a coloring page, and an activity where she makes her own dreidel. Because in history that week, we're learning about the fall of the or the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem. We have a map page that I had copied out of our teacher book. The other thing that I do with this too, because the purpose of this is to make it so that I'm not having to drag books out and find what we're supposed to do each day. And so I copied out the map page and then I just write down what the map work is that we're supposed to do on that page. So we mark what Abraham's journey is, we circle where Jerusalem is, uh, talk about what the Romans did to the temple in Jerusalem, we trace the Tigris and Euphrates River, and we color Mesopotamia, because those are all things that we've talked about. And so it's everything's labeled, and then she's able to do some basic map work. One of them was a coloring page, and so I make a copy of our coloring page and put that in there. And then the last thing, like I said, was an activity to make your own dreidel. So I copy out the worksheet for that, and then just write a note of like, hey, this is what the symbols on the dreidel mean, and this is how you play the game and just make it very basic. For English, I know how about how many penmanship pages I want her to do each week. So I just pick out the penmanship pages that'll work. I use Abeka for a penmanship right now as like a supplement to Logic of English. And so I took the pages out of the Abeka Cursive Workbook, put that in there, go through Logic of English, find the pages that we're doing in our lesson plan that week, uh, tear those out so they're ready to go in there. And then the last thing with Logic of English that um, we've had to do, which is a little more prep work, but once again, it's something I wanna have in that folder ready to go, is with a spelling list, they always have them do spelling on either the letter tiles board or just a whiteboard and have them write it out, which is great. And so I don't mind doing an oral spelling thing with her each week. And I'll give her the spelling list orally and she like practices and then like writes it out or does the letter tiles. And then I have her trace and then write each word that she had for her spelling that day. And when she does it, because they don't have this list in the Logic of English workbook, I just found some lined paper and wrote it on with a highlighter and then have her trace and write it and then trace and write some of the capital letters that she may be struggling with or just learned or that kind of thing. So once I get all my folders filled with the worksheets, I put them in my hanging folder and I'm prepped and ready to go. Now, the week of, I might on like, say Sunday night when I'm looking ahead at my week with my planner and I'm like, okay, what meals do I need to cook? What cleaning needs done? What appointments do we have? That kind of thing. I might go through and be like, okay, it's this week in school. Let's flip through and double check. Okay, this page is on Monday. I'm like, order the pages Monday through Friday. 
I might not, I don't know. <laughs> I don't do it often enough to be like, oh yeah, this is what I do all the time. Mainly, I just like to be able to pull the folder out, put it on my desk, keep it on my desk with my planner, and then I've got the pages ready to go. Um, I find that doing the pages like this and having them prepped really helps keep me from wasting time during the school day of, oh, let me go find this, or let me track this down, or hang on, where do we put that sheet, that kind of thing, because I know where it is, and then the school day is a lot shorter, which is nice, so then my daughter's less frustrated, I'm less frustrated. Um, the interruptions that my, my little boys make uh, are not as frustrating either, because it's not as big of a deal it's easier to get back on track and the other thing too that is helpful is sometimes in logic of english will you just with how the lessons go out throughout the week we might do one half of a page on a friday or like on tuesday or something and then the next half of the page i need to have for the next day for the next thing that she's doing and so it's easy to be like okay finish filling this out and then put this back in the folder on mom's desk so she knows where to put it so we have it for the next day or even if it gets to the end of the week and let's say it's a Friday and we did the first part of this lesson on a Friday and then Monday we're gonna pick up with the next part of the lesson that's on the other half of the page I can just take that and put it in the next folder it's not a okay you like keep track of that page throughout the weekend because I don't know about you guys but something magical happens on Saturday and Sunday where my desk becomes a dumping ground for every unknown thing in the house and so it's just much easier to try to keep that clutter under control by having what we need for school located in one spot. Uh, and so this is something that's been a really helpful tool for me. I find that uh, the quote is very true of proper prior planning uh, prevents poor performance. <laughs> and so for me, it's much easier that when I'm having a day that isn't maybe going according to plan, or I had a rough night and my morning isn't working well, or we have to do school in the afternoon, or you know, sometimes there's those days when like everything is just falling apart and it's that night and you're like, okay, let's do some school, but it's too overwhelming to try to find anything, you know? And I'm not saying that you can't ever skip a day of school just because life gets overwhelming. You totally can and I've totally done it before, but it's easier for me to fit school into pockets of time when I have stuff together. And it's easier for me, like if we're doing school on the go, to be able to grab it and go, as opposed to hang on, I've got to find all the books, I've got to find what we're doing, I've got to write down the questions. And it's like, nope, have everything written down, have everything laid out, ready to go. So I can just grab the folder, grab our planner, a couple of books like to read out of for like read alouds and go. You know, it doesn't need to be a super in-depth thing. So hopefully this was helpful for you guys. I would love to hear. Please comment below and let me know how you organize your homeschool. What are things that you do to set yourself up for success for the next week? Um, what are ways that you found that can alleviate stress or just keep you from wasting time throughout your school day? Please let me know. I'd love to share thoughts. Uh, I'm sure it'd be super helpful for other homeschool moms to see what you do as well. So please share that and I'll see you next time. Thanks.